I'm Ramona Wink, host of the program Connect that you're about to watch. Connect is all about real people sharing real stories about our real God doing really amazing things. Our God is doing a really amazing work in the Clarity Clinic right here in Dubuque, Iowa. And regardless of where you live, Chris Nauman, the executive director of the Clarity Clinic, is going to give you opportunities to become involved. My friends, this is a pregnancy center and a medical center. It meets young women right where they're at. That young woman who may be deciding about having an abortion, maybe a woman who had an abortion recently or several years ago, there is no judgment, there is no condemnation. There is God's love meeting them right where they're at. Again, Chris Nauman is here to tell you about how you might prayerfully become involved in the Clarity Clinic. I want you to connect with her today. Don't go away. I'm Ramona Wink, and thank you so very much for joining me for this week's program of Connect. My guest today is a woman that I know you will be very blessed to connect with. Her name is Chris Nauman. Chris, thank you so very thank much you. for being here. Every program of Connect, we always like to start with prayer. We are so Bible-based, and we bring everything to the Lord. So would you join me now for prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you through your Son, Jesus, and Chris and I are just so thankful, so very thankful to tell this beautiful story. We know that it will touch every person's heart in one way or another. And Heavenly Father, again, we know that it will bring clarity, clarity to so many people who are confused and maybe filled with fear that there is hope and light that they can hold on to through your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, Connect is a program where people can sing their praises and, and tell their amazing stories of you at work in their lives and through their lives. And today, I'm just really excited to have Chris here to tell your story, her story. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Friend, Chris is the executive director of the Clarity Clinic here in Dubuque, Iowa, and that is a um, pregnancy clinic and uh, provides medical services. And so again, if you're not familiar with the Clarity Clinic, we are going to allow Chris to really inform you about that and then talk about some really personal stories and, and, and share with you um, how the Clarity Clinic is being used by God to make a, a dramatic difference in the lives of many people who need it. Um, we'll also give you opportunities to get involved, but before we do any of that. Uh, we also like to start every program out by reading God's Word, and every time I ask the guest if they have scriptures that really speak to their heart or, or apply to what they're going to be talking with you about today, and Chris came prepared. I, I know this woman is, is um, a reader and a student of God's Word, and so she had verses already prepared for me, and so they are very fitting, and I share some of those with you now, and we'll probably share more of those throughout the show. But Psalm 33, 13 says, The Lord looks down from heaven and sees the whole human race. From his throne, he observes all who live on the earth. He made their hearts so he understands everything they do. Sometimes I think people, when they've um, made a mistake, and we've all made them, haven't we, Chris? We've all made mistakes, yeah. mistakes that we're very um, sad about, mistakes that... Um, fill us with shame and dishonor, but the Lord, the Lord understands everything we do. And then many times when we've made mistakes, it also fills us with fear for the decisions that we've made, or maybe before we make that decision, we're very filled with fear. So another verse that, that Chris selected is Psalm 34, 4, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me, freeing me from all my fears. Those, to, those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy. I love that, Chris, radiant with joy. I always say to people, I really want people to see the joy of Jesus in us. If people can't see the joy of Jesus Christ in us as Christians, then something's wrong. No shadow of shame will darken their faces. I cried out to the Lord in my suffering, and he heard me. 
He set me free from all my fears. And again, Chris, you really talked about um, how young women, especially when they discover that they are pregnant and it's not something that they plan for. Um, it's it's a, a, a time in their life when many of those young women are, are stricken with fear. And, uh, That's exactly right. Exactly. So the Clarity Clinic um, can be a, a resource to tell them what Jesus told us over and over and over, do not fear, do not be afraid. So Chris, kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. I want people to connect with you about your background and, and uh, how long you've been at the Clarity Clinic, what you enjoy most about your job, and then we'll talk about the Clarity Clinic and what it's doing right here in Dubuque, Iowa. Well, thank you for having me on the show. I have been at Clarity Clinic since 2008, and I am a mom of four kids. Um, I'm excited to be a part of Clarity Clinic because it was formerly the Tri-State Pregnancy Center, and it was located on Dell High Street. And my mom, who's now 84, she's not going to be happy I'm telling her age. <laughs> <laughs> she was one of the very first volunteers for oh, Tri-State nice. Pregnancy Center. Oh, yeah. nice, Chris. That's neat. And in 2006, um, they joined together with Focus on the Family. Oh, sure. And they got involved with a grant for funding for ultrasound machine because studies have shown that 90% of women who see that ultrasound with a heartbeat on the screen will change their mind. And so in 2006, we became a medical clinic. Okay. And now we're called Clarity Clinic, and we're located at 2100 Asbury Road in Dubuque, Iowa. We're in Suite 6. We're in the Pines Professional Plaza. And um, we served over 250 girls last year that were in a crisis pregnancy just here in Dubuque. But we don't just serve women in Dubuque. We're right on the border of Illinois and Wisconsin, so we serve women from Joe Davies County and southwest Wisconsin and west of Dubuque and south of Dubuque. And sure here and there sure. and everywhere. And it's not just the women, we also serve the men. We help young guys too that find themselves in that, an unplanned pregnancy. We have men's programs. We have post-abortion support for guys. We have post-abortion support for women. We are involved in the schools. Um, we address educating kids about the importance of abstinence and marriage. Mm -hmm. And we talk about relationships. And I think that's so key because we can't just meet them at the end when they're right, in this problem. Exactly. We have to connect with them in the beginning and so we connect in the schools sure. and we connect in the colleges and we work together with um, other resources in the community that can be a support to transform that fear into confidence Sure, and Amen. that's our goal. Amen. Getting into the schools I'm sure is a very big thing. How about getting into like youth groups, Chris? If there was a church youth group that really wanted to have you or someone from your team come and talk to them, would that be a possibility? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. We want to connect with churches. Good. We want to Good. connect with youth pastors. In fact, we have a specific program that's Bible-based. It goes through the life and story of Joseph and all the temptations he had, um, and it's called Excel. And Excel is a Bible-based program through abstinence and marriage. Um, it's a program that we were trained by the president and author of it. Um, his name is Scott Phelps, and he uses it across the nation. It's very successful. We have a parent program that's through the Center for Disease Control that our development director, Dennis Rima, who many people in the area know him because he's a coach and a referee, and he does a lot of PA for games. And he has his master's in education, and he has been trained and certified through the Center for Disease Control to offer this program called Building Families. And mm. we want to be a support system to the parents, too. Right, right. And so not even in the churches, but in the schools. Sure. Amen to that. So. Amen to that. Chris, what would you say is the percentage of young women who come who are um, going to make that decision versus the, the young women who come who have made the decision to have an abortion and need counseling. Is it a 50-50 split or do you see more young women coming to Clarity Clinic before they make that decision and wanting guidance? I think it's a split and okay. I think it is because you know many of the women that we see that maybe are only 17 years old, they've already had an abortion. Mm -hmm. I just met with a girl this week who had one at 14 oh, Chris. and never had support. Oh. Um, so yeah, I do think that we see both. I think we see them um, even when they're young that they've already had an abortion, but we do find that we're reaching the abortion-minded clients. Our, our specific marketing is for choices, for answers for women. And I believe that a clear, true choice for a woman is to know that she has options and that she has an informed decision about her health of her body. And that's what we're doing because most girls out of fear and not wanting to communicate with parents or not wanting to communicate with a health care provider, they feel that we're a refuge 
in the way that we can give them the free services. Yes. And um, if they would go, let's say that young girl has just found out she's pregnant, Chris, and again, she can't tell her parents. Uh, she probably can't tell the boyfriend, um, but maybe she does have a, a um, school counselor or a coach or something. Are those school people trained to say, hey, why don't you go visit the Clarity Clinic? Would that be something that that school could say and would say? Yes. Okay, good. Yes, they good. could. Good. Um, and, and it's important that the girls know what's going on with their health. You know, a lot of children that are involved with sexual behavior um, may not be getting tested for STD test. We mm -hmm. offer sure. STD testing. Sure. And, you know, it's very important that an abortion-minded woman knows that she has an STD or does not, and if she does, gets it treated, because if she goes to get an, a surgical abortion and has an STD that has not been treated, she can get septic infections and end up with pelvic inflammatory disease. So we're there for her health. This is a women's health issue as well. Sure. And also, you know, if they're not talking to their parents and they're not going to their, their physician, family physician, um, it's important that they get an ultrasound because that's the only way to confirm a viable pregnancy. If that girl is out of fear heading to an abortion clinic and has an ectopic pregnancy, and she takes either the medical uh, RU486, which is the medical abortion pills that are available, it doesn't work. Now, okay. back up on that. I, I don't mean to be naive, but what does that atopic, I, I don't know what that An means. An atopic is when it is not in the uterus. Okay. It's in the fallopian tubes. The, okay. the pregnancy is in the fallopian tubes. Okay. And it's very dangerous. It's life-threatening. Sure. Sure. In fact, if um, we don't even, if someone has a history of ectopic, we won't even scan that person because we will suggest that they go to their physician um, just because it is high risk. Um, however, if we do receive a girl that comes in and, and she does not have a viable pregnancy and we're not seeing, we operate a, under the AIUM guidelines, the American Institute for Ultrasound. Um, and basically, um, we're looking for three things. We're looking to see if that baby is in the uterus, if it has a heartbeat, and me by measurement, we measure the gestational stage. Okay. Because if she is abortion-minded, we will educate her, hey, this is the type of abortion you are looking at. And um, it's important that she knows the risks and the side effects physically and emotionally to her body that she will and possibly could encounter. And don't you think the emotional yeah. are just as big as the physical for many exactly. women? I've talked to so many women who have struggled with that. They had an abortion years ago and yes. they still, Chris, as you know better than I do, carry that guilt, carry that guilt. And um, so that emotional side effects, she has to be very well educated that that will change her, change her for the rest of her life. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just recently met with a young woman who had had one years ago and she hasn't been able to get pregnant and that's very common. Sure. Um, you know, so there's physical and then there's emotional, you know, wanting at this point trying to get pregnant and not being able to get pregnant. And right. that's very heartbreaking. Sure. Um, you know, and, and it's very important that they get that post-abortion support, and that's another part of the fear factor. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to understand that we're here to support them. And that's what I hear th through you is that, again, um, if you can um, educate and, and support the woman before, that's great, and hopefully she'll, she'll make a decision to carry out that pregnancy. But in those times when that woman already has had the abortion, then the Clarity Clinic is there not to condemn but to understand and That's support right. and love with the love of Jesus Christ. And so again, um, we want you to know that, that if you are struggling with that from a recent abortion or from an abortion from years ago, the Clarity Clinic is there to meet you where you are at and give you that emotional support. Uh, many times, I'm sure, based on God's word and God's love to say, Jesus will meet you right where you're at. That's exactly right. Amen, amen. You know, it's so important that you know if you're going to, send someone that you know or you're going to come yourself to Clarity Clinic that you will not be judged. Mm -hmm. We will love you and support you regardless of what you've done and regardless of what you're about to do. We're not there to change your mind. We're there to be a support system to you. Right. And we want to educate you and give you as much information that you can make an informed decision about your health. And regardless of what your decision is, we will be there for you in the end. I think that's beautiful. I think that's beautiful. So again, if you are a viewer right now, and, and, and I do pray that we're speaking to viewers right now who, who may be in this situation, and again, we are giving you a lifeline, a lifeline yeah. for support. And again, they won't judge you or condemn you. They will meet you right where you're at. Um, so that's wonderful.
we talked a lot about the fear and um, the fear both ways the fear of the young woman before and then the fear maybe of a woman who has had an abortion and the fear of being judged or being condemned or being out of God's will and, and yeah. those kind of things and Chris and I talked a lot about um, Jesus says time and time again do not fear and one passage that she had picked out was from Luke 1 and so I'd like to read that to you and of course this will be familiar God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a vil village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to Mary and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her, for God has decided to bless you. You will become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, Tammy and Chris and I were talking before this program, and we've all read that passage a lot of times, but again, to apply it to this situation brought new clarity to me, and that's God at work that we're talking about the Clarity Clinic, but confused and disturbed. Mary was confused and disturbed, and, and the angel said, don't be frightened, Mary. So again, Chris, expound on that and how you really help um, that young woman who's walking in before or after um, overcome the fear. I think the number one thing, I have to give God the glory. Amen. We always pray every day at the beginning of every day for every client God will send our way. Amen. And then, regardless if she walks in or she has a scheduled appointment, that client, from the time she comes in the door, we will take as much time as she needs. Mm. It's not like a regular doctor's office where you're going to come in and, well, he's got a patient waiting in the next office. We're right there with them. You know, if it takes her a half hour to tell us why she wants to do this, um, why she doesn't know how she could ever have this baby, we're there. Time is, doesn't matter. Um, the other thing is, is we have to share with them how they can just be supported in such a way, not just with resources in the community, but even through us with mentorship programs and things, classes that we have to be a support system throughout the entire pregnancy. It's up to them if they want it. Um, but I feel like, and I've learned this in the past three years that I've been in my position, that if a woman feels supported, especially if she's a college-age woman, which is the most vulnerable for abortion, um, that's where the highest statistic of abortion-minded women is. If they have that college education and the financial things all at stake, and they don't feel like they're supported from their college, that there isn't a resource guide for them to go back to and talk to people right there on campus that will support them and help them to retain that student education level, they may make that choice. Sure. And they will regret that choice. And many of them have done that and come back to us and talk to us and very much so regret it. But what we're trying to do is even work with the colleges and, and different resources in the area so that they have that support system and that they retain their education status. Yes. That's, That's huge That's because important. this pregnancy cannot end their life. This right. is not exactly. where life ends. This is exactly often right. where it begins and they get on track. And, and, and it may sound backwards to say that, but it's almost sometimes like a wake-up call. Right, right. Exactly right. Yeah. It, so, it can be a beginning. It can be a new chapter. Um, exactly. A different chapter that, that they may not have um, thought was going to be written. But it is a new chapter, and, and we believe in God's goodness and God's good plan uh, for yeah. every one of his children. Talk to me a little bit about um, if a young woman comes in and really um, is um, prayerfully determined to carry out the pregnancy, Chris. Then, but she, her number one question is, um, I can't keep the baby. And, and do you help that woman find um, an adoption service? Uh, yes. for the, I want to talk about that because I believe there are so many people out there who can't have children right. and are looking to adopt and right. there's that woman who has made the decision to carry the pregnancy through then can you assist them in how she could put that baby up for adoption? Yes and the way that we do that is just by connecting with adoption agencies we cannot be um, involved in the actual adoption sure. 
Um, but we do connect them with Bethany Christian Adoption Agency. Okay. There is Hillcrest Adoption Agency here in Dubuque. And we try to work with them. Sometimes we'll get um, people that might be in town and they might be from another state and they need to find someone in that location and we can connect them with a pregnancy center in that state. Um, we're part of a network called um, CareNet okay. and it's our affiliate nationwide. There's about 1,500 pregnancy medical clinics like ours in the nation. They have a legal and a medical team. Um, and so we network with other centers across the nation. We had a client um, last month that was from the Davenport area, which okay. is a little ways from here. And um, she wanted to talk to her parents and she wanted them to see the baby on the ultrasound. And I was able to connect with their director in Bettendorf okay. at the Women's Choice Center and connect that, that client to help her. Sure. And, and, and so that's, that's how we work it out. But mainly with women that um, consider adoption. I think the number one fear factor that's out there is women will say, you know, I just couldn't give up my baby. The word give up kind of pertains to a loss and I'm giving something up. But we have to remember that they are able to be part of a plan Amen. that they're planning and putting in place. They can be very active in choosing who will raise their child what the background of that that couple is you know from financial to um, you know the morals and values that that family holds and the religious backgrounds everything so they can be very much involved and as little or as greatly sure. as they want sure. I mean they can have um, an open adoption or a semi open and that's very po very, very very popular, popular right now you know many girls you know may see that baby you know, once a year, they might see it once a month, but you know, it's all their choice. Yeah, choice. So it is a good choice, and connecting them is great. That's got to be bring such joy oh. to, to your people, your staff yeah. at, at Clarity Clinic. Yeah. Chris, I do want to spend these last moments um, talking about how people right here, or, or even people away from here, um, could either financially get involved with the Clarity Clinic or give of their time or those kind of things. I do want to um, help people understand how they could help you make such a beautiful difference. Okay. Well, we have two websites. One is www.clarityclinic.com. The other one is www.thepregnancycenter.com. Um, if you go to that, those websites, at the bottom of the screen you'll see donor and you can go to the donor site from there and there information will tell you how you can donate via our website or you can call us at our clinic at area code 563-557-3123 and extension 3 is our development director Dennis Rima and he can give you information about upcoming events that we have. We're actually involved with Dancing with the Stars oh, here in Dubuque. Neat. Yeah, he's going to dance for um, fundraising and oh, we have fun. a fall banquet every year we have um, a fall banquet where we have a speaker that comes in and a, our meal is underwritten and it's a great time to find out more about the vision for the center for the next year. We also often have client testimonies and it's just a wonderful I know that we interviewed uh, your speaker from this past fall clinic, Claire Caldwell, yeah. and, and it, was a, it was a beautiful yeah. story that she shared. She is yeah. an abortion survivor and that was a dramatic story. You could probably still go to KFXB's uh, website and probably find that connect link and it would be with Claire Caldwell. Thinking of your mission statement and, and where you're headed in 2012 since we are in a new year, tell us about that, um, uh, Chris, where your goals are and again, um, what you really see in, in this upcoming year. Thank you. Um, number one, we want to connect more in our community. We want to bring more public awareness one of the ways we bring public awareness is by doing baby bottle fundraisers in the churches. You know, oftentimes churches will do a loose change offering, and that is awesome, and we appreciate that. But the number one way we can connect with more people in one place in a matter of three minutes is to be able to have three minutes in a service to get up and talk about what we do at the clinic, why we do it, and to share an uh, event save the date card with them. We have bo baby bottles that our development director provides and he will have that at the end of the service if they want to take when they can and two weeks later he comes back and picks it up. That is a great way for us to get the word out mm -hmm. and to connect financially. Um, another way uh, for the clinic this year is what we're trying to um, build committees through our board to um, encourage leaders in the community to connect 
And what we want to do with those leaders is to connect in areas through the education where we're in the schools sure. and develop that and, and fine tune areas where they're more needed, even in the high schools. We're in the middle schools right now, but we'd like to provide that in the high schools. In the colleges through speaking engagements and talking about abortion to sure. students. And um, you know, even with like a medical advisory committee where we could connect with physicians in the area yes. where they could understand what we're doing and why we do what we yes. do. Yes, yes. So we're supporting because we're resourcing them back to those doctors. Amen. And you know, they're not going to fall through the cracks. Right, right. Let's talk about um, budget and monetary. Um, are you totally funded, Chris, by uh, private donations and, and grants and those kind of things, or do you get federal funding? Absolutely no federal funding. That's what I thought. Mm -hmm. We're a hundred percent donor supported. We have a mm -hmm. two hundred and sixty thousand dollar budget that we have to raise every year. Two hundred sixty thousand okay. dollars, and it comes from all people just like you, donors who really want to uh, be a part of of this mission, and that's really what it is, uh, a mission helping young women and even young men and families uh, get the best um, information and education to make the best decisions for them. That's right. Amen. That's right. And your mission statement, does that change every year or do you have a standard mission statement that you'd like to share? Our standard mission statement that we have right now is that we connect with local uh, Christian organizations so that we can provide services, free services for women that are in a crisis pregnancy to transform their fear into confidence so that we might serve them with support and love. And you know, bottom line, I think the more people that find out about what we do and get involved with us, the more this vision for what we do grows. Mm -hmm. I mean, would we love to have a maternity home? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would we love to have a camp that connects you know, these students with things that they could learn more about their health? All of that is part of it, mm -hmm. but it takes money. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, again, I am so very thankful that you joined me for this week's program of Connect. Chris Nauman, uh, the executive director of the Clarity Clinic, has been my guest. We have put information up all throughout the show about how you can contact them, how you can become involved, how you might give financially. Again, it's a big budget, but every dollar, every penny of every dollar, is really used to make a, a life-changing um, impact on so many people right here in our area. So would you prayerfully consider becoming involved? I know that Chris is a strong Christian woman. She has a heart that is filled with compassion and she just wants to uh, reinforce today that she gives God all the glory for the Clarity Clinic work that is being done. And if you or someone you know is in a crisis pregnancy or if you just have questions and want information or if you have already had an abortion and just need people to meet you right where you are at, would you please, would you please make your way to the Clarity Clinic? I know with all my heart that you will be welcomed with the love of the Lord. And again, they are here to support you. I'm really glad you joined us. Please tell others about this show. And again, remember to connect with the Clarity Clinic today. I'll see you next week.